Welcome to Morally End. My name is Mark Machado and I'm joined by Estelle Vazio Devon in Colombo and Dominic Machado in the USA. Uh, firstly, guys, thanks a hold of the fort while I've been away the last few weeks. Um, if you're listening to this show and you haven't yet done so, please hit the follow button, please hit the subscribe and subscribe to our newsletter. Every week uh, we have some writing by some of the greatest English language writers uh, on Sri Lankan cricket and myself um, drop into your inbox. Uh, we write about a whole variety of topics. Sometimes we look back at what's happened in the past. Sometimes we look at the future, what could happen. And sometimes we even reflect on what's just happened as well and what's happening. Um, today, we've got a lot to talk about. Charmory's um, finally made it to the WPL, but she's not getting a game. And we'll also have a look at the T20 squad that's going off to Bangladesh next week as well. Um, Estelle, let's start on the WPL. We're recording this just minutes after the UP Warriors um, managed to, to get over the line against the, the Mumbai Indians. Um, M- Mumbai put on quite a big total and, and UP chased it all down. And ch- as I mentioned, Charmory wasn't in that side are we going to see her play much cricket during this tournament? I think it's going to be really tricky because, I mean, we were talking about this on WhatsApp, right? Her her position is obviously opening. It doesn't look like there's a position there now with Kiran Navgire getting runs at the top of the order. And for any of these teams, Indian players getting runs or taking wickets, performing well, means then they have options with the overseas players, right? And with in Chamari's case, the opening spot is now going to be really tough for her. I know she's she'd be willing to bat wherever the team needs her to. And in that case, there might be an opening in, in the form of, you know, them leaving out Talia Magra and bringing her in. But um, that opening spot now is looking really tricky for her. It's a, it's a, it's a funny situation. I know a lot of Sri Lankans are asking why she isn't playing and you know obviously there is a there is an argument to be had there as well but i think it comes down to the combinations that up warriors have picked if you look at their squad they don't have that many well known indian players and that is a big problem i think overall right so in all these franchise leagues because you have a limited number of spots for overseas players you kind of have to fit your overseas players into spots where you don't have local players. And UP Warriors, I don't know, for whatever reason, let go of Shabnim Ismail last year in the hopes of, you know, Mm. them having uh, Bell in the side. And then she had to pull out. And instead of getting a quick or two quicks to replace them, they got two opening batters in Danny Wyatt and Chamari Atapattu. So they, I think they further handicapped themselves by that. Um, so it's going to be really tough. Uh, I mean, Talia Magra has not been in great form, but her one big advantage is that she bowls pace, right? And I don't see... Obviously, they are not going to drop Healy because she's captain and she's, you know... what one of the best opening batters in the world right now, right? And they're not going to drop Sophie Eccleston, the best bowler in the world for last number of years. Grace Harris is incredible, I think, and a very unique player in that you don't get a lot of uh, players in women's cricket who can strike the ball like that in the middle overs. You get a lot of quick scoring openers, but you don't get a lot to come in the middle order and who can hit like that. So there's really only one kind of flexible position and that's what they've used Talia Magra in. Uh, I'd be interested to see if they, wa- they want to try and switch things up with the batting order. Maybe Atapattu comes in at three or um, Healy drops down to three, I, I, I really doubt that will happen. But I'd be interested to see if they try that because Magra looks really out of sorts. But whatever happens, I think even if she gets in, she's going to have to really perform to kind of keep, get herself three, four games on the trot. Yeah, I, I looked at it and I thought she's not getting the place as a as an opener at the moment, because as you say, the young Indian player they've dropped in kind of feels to us as, you know, we're predominantly Charmory watchers. It's kind of come out of nowhere. 
Um, but I do wonder if actually she might be a decent option for, for Talia McGrath on the basis that she gives them another bowling option. And today they, they leaked runs and maybe they they might just fancy have basically an all-rounder to come in. And if they are going to leak runs, you know, Talia McGrath said they had umpteen opportunities in, in, in those conditions and, and not really see, seize the day the way she has been able to when she's played in... Uh, outside of Asia, so I wonder if that that's the way way she gets in. Um, I mean, Dom, she's she's going to score a revenge run soon, isn't it? Because we know the one thing about Charmory is you just don't get her angry, right? Yeah, yeah. She's seeing all these Aussies being included ahead of her, and I'm I'm just imagining next time Sri Lanka plays Australia, she's going to she's going to score a massive hundred to show them what they missed out on. But, you know, to, to get back to the to the question, um, you know, I think what Estelle brought up, you have three of the best opening batters in the world, all of whom are overseas players in your side. And you kind of have to question the management decision there. Right. Uh, when you've already drafted, you know, one Danny Wyatt in the auction, why are you replacing a fast bowler with another, you know, opening batter and, it, and especially if you if you view Chomery that highly you have to find a way to put one of Chomery and Wyatt I think in in the lineup right like because it, it, if you're going to say all right my decision is I want to front load my lineup with my rock star um, international players right that that's one way to go about these things right and we see that in the, in the men's IPL uh, but to leave them on the bench, I think, is a misuse of resources. And I think that that's really what's going on is it's a poor allocation of, OK, what what are we best at and what do we need help with? I think right now, Estelle, you you hit it spot on, right? They're trying to balance the side. Talia McGraw bowls some pace, right? They don't have the pace bowlers right now. Um, but maybe you just say, OK, what if we what if we bring in Chomri? We get another bowling option there. She bowls as an all rounder. That's number three as well. Oh, and you you kind of double down on on that strategy rather than putting in players that perhaps might not match as well. But it's a shame. I think she's going to use it as a um, as something to to motivate her in the future. Um, and you know, we all know that Chamri is like a sponge. So she's soaking up all the knowledge she can from training with these players and getting this experience, and she's going to use it against them later. I wonder if it's a strategy, actually. <laughs> get, get her angry and then, you know, get her frustrated that she's not on the side, she's not able to score runs. And that's You know what? I, I don't that. know if I'm, I imagined it, but the few shots they did show off the dugout, she didn't look really happy, <laughs> did she? <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's it's such a weird uh, emotion for me because I was so invested in her getting her to the WPL. It didn't even cross my mind that she wouldn't even be in the, <laughs> making the team, right? Um, and obviously that happens to all the the foreign players, right? It, it's a bit of a struggle to to guarantee that that space. So it was a bit like, okay, I don't know. Am I meant to be supporting them? Do I want them to lose? Like, <laughs> like what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> like, I think the main issue is, to be honest, it's her missing out in the first auction. Hmm. That was, I think, the big problem. If she had got in in the first auction, then they're making up their teams. They they would have they she would have become a big part of the team, right? But now, like we said before. They have they've brought in two players who who they don't have a position for, and I mean Atapattu. I sp when I spoke to her for my interview, said that RCB also had wanted her once. Said the night pulled out. That may have been a better option for her, but unfortunately, it didn't work out because now it's like you know, if she plays and she doesn't succeed, how many games are you gonna give her, right? Because yeah. you've got Wyatt who's also had re a really good 12 months, right? That's the thing with, with UP Warriors is that all of those batters, and I think last week we did a, I did a preview on the WPL. It's like all five of those overseas batters have performed well over the last, uh, last year, right? In terms of strike rates and, you know, power play batting and middle over batting and all of that. So it, it's like, 
how long can you afford to give someone time to fail? I mean, that's the case with Talia McGrath as well, right? We know what a quality player she is. And I think she was the highest run scorer for them last season. Mm -hmm. So how long are you going to give them the opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. Any like, just want to just... I don't. I think it's becoming almost like a national obsession with Sri Lankans all over the world. And in Sri Lanka, just the 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 trials and tribulations of, of Charmory. It's almost like actually, in a way, it's kind of reflective of what the Sri Lankan experience is, right? It's like okay, it's not just about you know get, getting into the squad is the easy part. It's it's yeah. getting hold of that shirt and then keeping that shirt. That's the hard part, right? And she's going to try and try and do that um, now and. You know, I'm sure I'm sure she'll rise to the challenge, but I'm sure in a couple of weeks' time we'll be uh, talking about how how she's lit the WPL alight, yeah. and yeah. we can now hail her as the greatest women's cricketer of this moment and possibly of all time. Um, and this is just another step to that to that on, along that journey that we are all enjoying, however frustrating it might be um, <laughs> <laughs> along. Um, Shall we talk about the the T Twenty I squad that's going to Bangladesh? The first thing that we haven't had a chance to have a, a chat about on Murali End yet is that uh, our, our captain and leader, our bowler, batter, and captain, uh, uh, Winindu Hasaranga, is going to be suspended for the first two games. Um, this is, I, I think, on the basis that these are our last three games. Mm-hmm before we get into full World Cup warm-up mode and, and then into the World Cup of T20 cricket, I actually think it's quite a bit of a disaster, um, this suspension. And I think it, it it's it's really terrible timing. And it essentially, as much as I agree with Shrunken Captain standing up to umpires and calling out bad decisions, I think he needs to to box he should have boxed a little bit clever and I hope he learns a lot from the mistakes he's made here because I think he's left us in a bit of a bad place what do you think Dom you know I it's sort of a blessing and a curse to me I think testing a bit of bench strength before a big tournament is good I think they're working on trying to get the last three or four players in so because it's almost, it's it's funny, thankfully it's not an injury, but because Wainindu plays such a big role, right, he has a batting role, he has a bowling role, he's the captain, you get to kind of see a little bit of what our players are made of, right? So maybe Kamindu Mendes gets a chance to play because uh, Wainindu is not there, right? And to back up his impressive performance in the third T20 with another two good performances, uh, we get to see that that question of who's the backup spinner in case one of Dikshana or or um, Hasaranga gets injured, who's capable of doing the job. Uh, interestingly, they decided to um, give time to Vandersay, who they excluded last time, and not bring in someone like Vyas Khan. Uh, maybe they think it's too close to the World Cup to trial him. Uh, that doesn't really make sense to me. But I think that question of um, who are the 15 going to be is something that that this will actually help us answer and you know Wainindu is going to have a busy few months ahead he'll have plenty of time to get himself informed through the IPL um, and so I, I'm not actually that upset about it I, I want to see how they play without being able to depend on Wainindu rescuing them whether it's giving a quick 60 off a 30 or whether it's getting four wickets. I want to see how they game plan to win a match without him, because you know that when it comes to the world cup teams are going to be targeting him, right? They're going to be going after his overs. They're going to try to hit him out. They're going to be going after him as a batter because he is the most explosive batter we have. Um, So I think it's a, it's a really good test for the team to develop a sense of identity without depending on him so much. Estelle, where are you in the Hasaranga situation he's left us in and, and how the the massive gaps in the team are filled? Yeah, I I, I tend to agree with Dom, right? I think it, it might turn out to be an opportunity to kind of finalise those last few spots. Just on what actually happened, since we didn't, we didn't mm. talk about it last time as well, I think 
those are the kind of things you have to learn as you go on, right? Becoming a captain. Because you no matter how shit the decision is from the umpire, you know if you say or do something like what he did, you're going to be reprimanded. You know that, right? Whether you are right or wrong, it doesn't matter. And I'm saying this because I saw a lot of comp like you know stuff on the internet about you know why isn't the umpire getting bad they have a process to assess the umpiring and you know elite panel and all of that right so there is a process there and the process for the players is this that there are certain you know regulations you need to follow and if you don't you open yourself up to mm. bans and suspensions so that's the only thing like i mean i'm i'm all for him standing up for his team because i think uh, he made a very valid point in that it that could have been a dangerous delivery right because it mm -hmm. could have hit him in the face if it was a little higher so that that i felt was a really valid point which a lot of a lot of us weren't really thinking about but um you have to also be smart right in how and i i think he will learn that as he goes on because there are always going to be consequences to um, what you do as a captain and all that is laid out for you. Mm. Um, back to your point on the on the question, Vandersa is an interesting choice, I think, because Hasarang is definitely playing the World Cup. So the only reason he wouldn't play is if he has an injury, right? And in that case, you would probably just bring in a replacement. So I don't know if you're going to want to have a leg spinner in the squad. Um, but he's a guy who also has kind of done well in the opportunities he's got. And if 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 you follow the ethos of what the what the selectors have said, the new selectors have said, they are looking for experience. So they're not going to be looking for guys like Vyas Khan, even if he's been doing really well, right? So that's why you see the likes of Van der Sey, Akhila Dhananjaya getting opportunities repeatedly because they're looking at going into this World Cup with plenty of experience. Even Dhananjaya De Silva, who a lot of us, I think, can agree doesn't really have a significant role to play in the side or hasn't really played a significant role. Yeah, yeah, but no. <laughs> but but he has a lovely smile, and he and when he hits the ball, sometimes it looks absolutely beautiful as well. So um, he's aesthetically pleasing, and that means a lot in cricket. Looking at the squad that they've picked, obviously Patton was injured as well, and they, and they put Avishka in. Uh, do do we think Avishka is gonna gonna open, or what do you think the the thinking is, is there? I mean. I know, I've got to caveat this, I've asked that question with Sri Lankan cricket doesn't often work logically, so it doesn't necessarily mean if you come into the squad that you're going to play. Um, and if they bring you in as an injury replacement, and I'm asking you to second guess, actually kind of third or fourth guess, what might happen. Dom, do you want to, do you want to have a go? Is, are we going yeah, to see much? Yeah, I mean... The, the the only scenario looking at the squad, the only person who I could see opening the batting aside from Avishka is KJP, right? Um, and the question is whether they want to throw more chances KJP's way. Um, it seems like very often with him, form is thrown out the window uh, because he runs hot and cold and you never know when he's going to catch a heater and just play start playing some unbelievable cricket. So, you know, there's a possibility that they open with KJP, but I'd really like to see again right if we're if we're thinking about who's the backup opener in the squad right i'd like to see avishka get that chance we know roughly what kjp can do right that once out of every five innings he's going to play <laughs> a brilliant knock right but i think um avishka especially on the back of his series against afghanistan is going to be is is going to come in and slot in um, I'm curious what the batting order will look like and and how much some of the performances from the last series are going to impact that. Because I think we know that um, the top two are kind of decided, right? We know that it's probably going to be Potham and Kusil Mendes. Um, but I think then that three, four, five, probably we can slot in Sidira at four since he showed the ability to anchor pretty well and he showed some aggression. But um whether they're going to keep Charith at five, which I think is a bit of a, 
he's a bit out of place there. I'd love to see him bat at three. Um, he seems to be a player who, once he gets a few balls in, can actually um, be a really destructive batter and becomes really creative. So um, I'd love to see them try that this series, especially since Wainindu is not going to be around. Um, so put him in at three rather than trying DDS, where, again, we know what we're going to get. We're going to get either like a 14 off of 14 or a 24 off of uh, 18 or something like that. So uh, I, I'm curious generally how they manage the batting lineup without um, Wainindu as a floater, because we saw him come in at four, five, and six, right? So that means there's naturally some flexibility. Um, strangely, I think it also means they're definitely going to go seven, four. We've been talking about using the mm -hmm. Wainindu advantage to play with uh, perhaps one fewer batter, right? But now they're almost certainly going to play with an extremely long batting lineup. Yeah, uh, th that... I think the batting lineup is about the intent that they they want to show, right? So yeah. I think what we saw what we saw against Afghanistan and the Afghanistan series is the evolution into intent monsters, right? The 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 target from what I can see looked to be a, to try and go at ten and over, right? To try and get that two hundred mark, and I suppose this is why people who are into test cricket hate T20 because what happens is, is it means you devalue the wicket. You don't care if you lose wickets, right? And that's why I think playing a Vishka at the top might be a bit of a risk because then potentially you've got a Vishka, Sadira and, and Charith. With Patton, we've seen that they stayed with him for, for you know, they, they backed him for a few years and now you're starting to see his strike rate really come through and he's really hitting the ball nicely and really scoring scoring high and you, there's this kind of idea going around that if Patton isn't doing it then Kussel will do it and if if they're not doing it they both just get out and then you just mm -hmm. always have somebody to show intent I just wonder if Avishka is going to be able to come in and seize the opportunity and really start hitting the runs and that's why I'm I'm, I'm a bit dubious on whether or not he'll start or whether they might put someone like DDS um at the top of the order to bring all the runs to the yard. What's your take on it, Estelle? Who do you think's going to open for Sri Lanka next week in the T20s? I hope it's Avishka Fernando because I'm a firm believer that if you, if there's an injury, you have to slot in the replacement player in that position. Don't move everybody else around because that doesn't make sense, right? So I hope he opens. He's shown some... It's a tricky thing with Avishka, right? Because we saw how he struggled against Zimbabwe, against the left arm bowling. And then inexplicably, Afghanistan didn't use the same tactic to him when they had a left armor too, right? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see because Bangladesh do have left armors. Mm -hmm. And also something we need to keep in mind is we don't know how the Bangladesh pitches are going to play. Are they going to be the usual, you know, low scoring ones? And in that case, Sri Lanka's intent is going to be interesting because they're going to go into this series not knowing how they should play. Whereas when they when they were playing here, they knew that, okay, they'd, be, they'd requested for tracks that had runs in them and they knew they could, you know, really take those risks. But in Bangladesh, you don't know... Yeah. whether you're going to get a good track or whether it's going to be slow and low. And I think that's, um, well, I was going to say, I think that's going to be good preparation because to be honest, um, the, the World Cup that's coming up, right? We've seen what West Indian pitches look like. There's a chance that you get an absolute slow, low um, pitch. Also a chance that you get a very flat pitch where you can score a lot of runs. We have absolutely no idea what the pitches in the United States are going to look like. So I think it's really important to build up that ability to play multiple ways. I think the other thing you could do is you tell Avishka from ball one, okay, your job is just to be as aggressive as possible. You don't need, we don't need you to stay till the 12th, 13th over. Just try to get boundaries, try to get runs. Don't worry about anything else. We've got you covered. Um, Interestingly, I'll, I'll add that maybe there's a comfort batting with uh, Kusal because they opened the batting last year when when Avishka had a really excellent run of form. So I think batting with someone who you know how to bat with, I think this is one thing that um, I noticed in a couple of the, the games against Afghanistan. 
is that there were a couple pairs that clearly hadn't ever batted together and the running was really terrible and there were almost some terrible mix-ups. I think there was one with Kamindu and Sidira and 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 these guys who haven't played together either at the international level or at the, you know, sort of at a uh, club level or anything. So I think there is some comfort and knowing, okay, I know what how he's going to play so I can go play my game. And he was pretty aggressive in last LPL as a as a power play opener too. Um, I, I'm I'm actually quite excited about this series because you know it's our annual series against Bangladesh. Um, the, the those snakes, um, yeah. The, there's the whole you know. I'd say this is actually after India Pakistan. This is the biggest rivalry in cricket now. Like it, it, England will will forever have the moral ashes, and Australia will probably forever hold. The whole the ashes, All the ashes. That's, yeah that that's that's always becoming a no contest um and i can't think of any other rivalries i don't know south africa west indies is that a thing i don't who knows well this is the only one which is like really bitter because because of the political situation india pakistan can't really get like the players are like almost diplomats at this stage <laughs> where I think there is fully yeah. no diplomatic <laughs> thoughts when either of these two 11s step onto the pitch. If anything, Bangladesh are lucky Hasaranga wasn't playing because he could go full Douglas Jardine. Who knows? Um, and, and I think most Sri Lankans would back him if he did that. Um, I'm joking. I obviously don't condone violence on a, on a cricket pitch. <laughs> um, Estelle, can we talk a little bit about the T10 league? that's that's due because what well, i think it was about this time last year was it a little bit before um there was a, a lovely big press conference and a big press release that sri lanka was going to get a t10 league we were expecting it to start december it was going to be both men and women's as in two separate leagues not mixed and uh it's been over a year now and that that's definitely not happened however we did get a press release a few days ago claiming there will be a t10 in colombo i think in december this year um but just for the men a uh sadly i'm not on the ground in sri lanka as, as you can tell from my pronunciation of any sri lankan word um but is is there much enthusiasm for t10 in in sri lanka at the moment Estelle, and is there much chat about where the T10 Women's League is, has disappeared too? I don't think there's much discussion, to be honest, because it's still, it's like the early days of the T20 uh, format, right? Mm. A lot of people don't feel like it's it's real cricket. It's like just a bit of fun, right? I don't know if you guys remember, but in the 90s, the Hong Kong Sixers, Yeah, it kind of feels something like that. I do feel, though, that the women would have probably benefited from a league more than the men because we do have an LPL, right? Which I think Sri Lanka should be given, giving their full focus to. Obviously, this the T10 league is run by a separate organization which runs leagues in different countries as well. So, it's, it's completely different from whoever is running the LPL. But I do think the women would have benefited because they don't have a franchise league. And it would have been interesting actually to see what we have to offer in that sense. I am still skeptical about, you know, women's fran franchise league in Sri Lanka for the only reason that we don't see that many big hitters. And I'm kind of nervous that playing a tournament where you're scoring at like a runner ball or seven runs and over might do more harm than good. But in this case, it's kind of disappointing that obviously the players would have been excited about having an opportunity like that. Because, I mean, we spoke about this last week as well, Dom, about, about the visibility factor with Sri Lankan players, right? And Chamari mentioned this when I spoke to her about you know, wait, you talk about an Indian player, uh, Kiran Navgire, who made runs today for the UP Warriors, right? With no in WPL, you're not seeing that player, right? We are not seeing her. Yeah, people who follow domestic cricket in India know what she's capable of. But the world is not seeing that player. And so her her kind of future is very close, right? It's it's It has only 
Oh, opportunities are only in India. So I think that's one of the big problems Sri Lanka has as well. It's like there may be capable players and there may be players who potentially could get a lot of opportunities in foreign franchise leagues as well. But because there's no visibility, they don't get those opportunities. So I think it's mm-hmm. it's it's a missed opportunity. I would I would think a women's league would have been more valuable than a men's league uh, given that there already exists an LPL. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe that they haven't, there isn't plans afoot to do a WLPL because it just, in my mind, the like if you're going to be brutal about it, the LPL was set up to basically flog those teams to, t, uh, to IPL owners or to uh, PSL owners or potentially even T. T10 owners. I know obviously the Colombo side is owned by a T10 team now. And surely if you run two sides, if you have two tournaments, then it doubles the value of, of the team. I know the maths would say it doesn't actually double the value, but it increases the value, right? And you've got, you know, double the amount of um matches that you're involved in to market your your team in, and you've got more players to wear in your wearing your shirt. And on top of all that, it's you look at the WPL, the direction of traffic in women's cricket is only go one way. The when when you know the, the, the IPL owners that aren't involved in the WPL will all be kicking themselves at the moment and all be banging the door down to try and get to try and get into it. If Sri Lanka's gonna compete and wants to be taken seriously as a cricketing nation, it has to offer you know op- these opportunities to get into women's Sri Lankan cricket to 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 the people who have the money, which is you know, if you're going to be brutal about it, it's the people who are in IPL sides, right? So, obviously, you know, I, I want Sri Lankan women to have as many opportunities as possible because I want them to succeed and win. But also, I there is another side of it, which is Sri Lanka has let itself down and it's not putting itself at the forefront of the way cricket is going and the way sport is going globally by not creating a, a women's franchise league, which I know is super cynical, but I think that's you know the reality of the situation, and I think the t- the the people who run and own the T10 league should really like you know, should really be trying to get that women's league on as quickly as possible. If you know for no other reason, there's no other women's T10 league anywhere else in the world, so there'll definitely be players who are, you know who, who who miss out on BBL contracts, or you can play it after the BBL because it doesn't play at the the, the big bash doesn't play at the same time as um, the the men's and women's aren't at the same time. So the players are available. And all, because they run those T10 leagues in like two and a half weeks, don't they? So, um, so I mean... 10, I, 10 days. This is this one is 10 days total. Yeah. 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 What's I, interesting also, I feel like, I mean, when we talk about leagues and having women's leagues or promoting women's sport, there's always this discussion about, you know, does it make business sense, right? But one interesting thing I saw was in the WBBL and the Super Smash, they really marketed Chamari, right? And so she has become, I would say, someone who puts people in seats, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an in that I I feel that's something that you can capitalize on when you are having I mean Sri Lanka cricket doesn't market her as much as uh, at the WBPL they had a separate stand for her or like a temporary stand for her at the North Sydney Oval right oh sorry it was yeah. at Sydney Cricket Ground mm-hmm. where they you know actively promoted look this is Sri Lankan player we want Sri Lankan people to come and watch this game so they were using her for that to market to a community that maybe doesn't really have that much interest in the WB, WBBL. Similarly, it happened in the Super Smash as well, where mm-hmm. they, they were putting her as one of the, you know, big draws of the Super Smash. And Super Smash doesn't have big players playing, right? So I think that could also be something that they, can, they should be discussing, mm-hmm. particularly because we know she's not going to be a, that's that that draw is not going to last for long right mm. um so that that if you're talking about the business side of things then maybe that's something you need to be looking mm. at as well yeah absolutely like yeah. I'm, i'll go on though i was going to say i think the other thing is is charmery has gravitational pull right so when she's playing in a league it means that it's serious and that 
international players will want to come. She has friends at all these teams. She knows all these cricketers. That and and if she backs it, right, it gains some sort of cachet, right? So you have to strike while the iron is hot, while you still have this resource who can bring in people. And I wonder, we've talked about this um, off air and on air, how much of it is a reluctance upon um, that that's a Sri, a Sri Lankan cultural issue where we don't want to put a woman on a billboard and say, look at this awesome female cricketer or come be like her. Right. If there's a reluctance to market her in the way that they do with Chamri Bay. Right. Even the UP Warriors were sending out tons of tweets, you know, when she was signed and and she puts people in seats. Right. And and the fact that Sri Lanka hasn't realized that hasn't capitalized on that, um, that, you know, SL, you told the, the story about how uh, they weren't going to cover the Sri Lanka New Zealand series. Right. And Papare had to cover it. Um, that there's a reluctance to acknowledge this kind of special talent that they have because it kind of calls into question some societal, all cultural structures that they do have, right? They kind of want to say, okay, it's good that we have it and we can pat ourselves on the back, but do we really want to invest in it and see what comes from, you know, extolling this, this, this model of women's cricket? Um, so I think there's a little bit of cultural conservatism that, that runs behind this and probably not a little, probably a lot if we're, if we're being frank. Poor, poor uh, SLC. They've got to, they've got to do more, haven't they? They've got to, got to be uh, trying to, try to push the women's game more of, you know, I, I mean, I think me and Estelle are probably the most two prominent, prominent, we have no prominence, uh, like vocal critics off, off it, trying to get women's, uh, you know, school girls to play big matches and women's franchise leagues. There's just so many ideas that I think are just so easy to mm. implement. Probably wouldn't even lose them that much money in the short term, and would add so much more value and would strengthen their the cricket's hand in in the country. I mean, I know FIFA have put a load of money in to Shrunk to run at this uh, this tournament in March, the most bizarre football tournament in the world. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Yeah. And it's 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 you know part of that is because FIFA are kind of sniffing blood, right? They're like Sri Lanka is one of the few countries in the world where football isn't the predominant sport <laughs> and and really doesn't have much cultural cultural resonance. But actually, you know, all our cricketers tweet about which uh, football teams they support, and if FIFA can come in there, they'll start to take kids away from playing cricket. I mean, I know you know I I don't think Sri Lanka is going to drop out of producing top class cricketers in the next kind of 5, 10, 15 years. But it could happen 25 years down the line, right? If you go back yeah, and read and about... Yeah, it comes, and it comes down to why uh, Why is there huge interest in cricket? It's because there is a future in cricket, right? Mm, yeah. If you have a future in football, I, I mean, I know there are, in every major school, they have football teams and they do play football big matches, but there is no future beyond schools football, right? The club system exists, but it's not a, it's not something you can't. You play for passion, basically. Mm -hmm. You can't make a living out of it. But if I mean, if that happens, yeah, I can see Sri Lanka. A lot of Sri Lankans shifting from. Um, cricket to football you 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 guys have seen the popularity of rugby so that could definitely happen if there was like an opportunity to make it a career yeah, yeah uh, absolutely like F fifa or you know regardless of what you think of fifa um they'll they'll just brutally come come coming into shrunk in a way to try and stop people playing cricket look i'm a massive football fan as well right so i you know i, I what i don't want to see is shrunk having a mediocre cricket team and a, and a slightly less than bad football team i want them to be <laughs> world champions in all the sports right but i think let's focus at this moment on cricket and then once we've nailed that and we've got opportunities for, for the best boys and the best girls to go on and be the best cricketers yeah. they can be then let's look at other sports let's i'd suggest maybe rugby union should be next because that's probably the most developed sport after cricket on the on the island i think um, and maybe football's a, a, a way back. That doesn't mean I won't be watching Sri Lanka versus Papua New Guinea when that happens in a few <laughs> weeks' time. Um, guys, should we leave it there unless anyone's got any uh, anything else that they want to feel needs urgent discussion 
on the pod. Is there anything else from the last week in Sri Lankan cricket that I have missed? Oh, uh, we should mention that the men's NSL 50 over has started. Um, so that's something we'll be we'll be monitoring. Um, particularly and there have been when- some big scores as well, yeah. right? That's exactly what I was going to say. That's the one thing I'm monitoring more than performances is what type of pitches are being prepared. And that was the first thing I noticed is some scores in excess of 300, which makes me feel uh, that they're trying to execute that plan of making better pitches throughout the island, um, more systemic than just oh, for international matches, but actually prepping players for it. So that was the only other thing that that's going on that I think is worth worth kind of noting. Do you, do you have a favourite side, either of you two, in the NSL? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. That's the that... tough thing with this NSL, right? Because yeah. it's although it's named by like province, is it province? Not provinces, no uh, like districts. Towns. Yeah, 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 or cities. It's it's not that players are from. I mean, I understand you can't have like twenty players from. Jeff now or 20 players from Candy, but I, there aren't any in some teams. Like you don't have a single Candy player in the Candy team. Uh, so it's very difficult to form a loyalty, I feel. that That's one thing yeah. possibly they can address in the future. Does I that mean they don't want us to though? Is that is that the whole, like, because the teams also have no branding. And also, on top of that, it's not uncommon for Shrunka to have domestic tournaments where it's like, what, red, green, blue, yeah. yellow, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So gray. it's kind of like grey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, grey. has got to be all the, the worst colour, hasn't it? Like, <laughs> can you imagine? You, you, like, you're really buzzing for the tournament. You turn up there and they're like, yeah, you're, you're grey this, this season. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting, though? I think this year they actually tagged it to your club team yeah so yeah Lumbo is basically like ssc more or less they've like had that. this ever i think ever since they started the nsl so they have i think a couple of clubs per team so yeah jaffna has tamil union and i think ccc yeah, yeah. uh colombo is ssc and someone um so you kind of are familiar with some yeah. of the players and that kind of thing is there yeah. brilliant um, I can't wait to hear more, more about it. And uh, I might have to get myself a Candy White's shirt. <laughs> I don't know if that exists, Mark. I don't yeah, I was going to... I think they just... I wonder if they just wear their club t-shirts. No. SLC has the budget for... Yeah, they, they have their own t-shirts, but they look like, you know, they look like the t-shirts that my son gets for his soccer, for his six-year-old soccer team. They're like made <laughs> in the store the week before and they say candy <laughs> across the middle. That It's like that level of production. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad it's on and I'm glad that um, they're, they're playing cricket and, you know, because that's what cricketers do, isn't it? They're meant to just play cricket. So I'm glad... Um, that that they've got the tournament on and we'll be keeping an eye on it. Um, I think that's everything that we need to mention. Um, we haven't gotten into why Veerskamp isn't in the squad. Mm. Um, that's the other kind of big question that seems to be in everyone's lips in in social media. I guess the kind of answer to it is, is that he probably needs a bit more experience in, in T20 cricket, right? Um, yeah, right now, I think for the World Cup, they're just looking at experienced players. So they, it's very difficult to see someone like him breaking into the side, right? And I think that's actually beneficial for him hmm. because he gets to, he doesn't need to be blooded into the team now. He gets to kind of have his time in franchise leagues. He's not, he's not old. He's got time on his hands. There's no need to rush him in now. And kind of have him sitting on the bench at the World Cup, and you know, I feel like it's good. He can. Learn. He's just started playing foreign franchise leagues. He yeah. gets some experience outside. There's no rush to bringing him, bring him in because we've already got one in the. Mm. Just let him kind of grow as a cricketer. Yeah, yeah, hard agree. Uh, guys, let's leave it there. Uh, this will be the Murley end. If you got all the, this far and you haven't signed up to the newsletter, then what are you doing? Um, the link's in the description. Uh, we'll be back next week where we'll be getting angry at the Bangladeshis. And um, ho- hopefully by this time next week, Charith would have timed someone out. And uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 we will be on top of the Bangladesh tour. And um, have a good week. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs>